Well, Black Death is an epidemic on an unimaginable scale, which swept across Europe in the mid-14th century, killing, we now believe, and the records are very good, up to half of the population, one in two of the population, in the space of seven years. It's caused by a bacterium, um, which is called Yersinia pestis. The bacterium evolved actually from a harmless, um, non-pathogenic bacterium that normally lives in the soil. But the, the pathogenic Yersinia pestis is spread by fleas, which in turn are spread by rats. It's believed that the rats um, moved around on uh, ships as part of trade at the time uh, in, in medieval Europe. But more recently, there have been outbreaks of the plague um, in North America and South America, for example. So it's very much, although we think of the plague as something that happened a long time ago and, and so decimated the European populations then, it is still, still very much an ongoing concern and it's a very important pathogen today. The authors um, had access to uh, teeth and bones from East Smithfield's burial ground here in London. The scale of deaths is enormous, as an Italian chronicler said at the time, the living were scarcely able to bury the dead. So that places like Smithfield were set up at very short notice, just in order to get rid of the, of the bodies and to have the funerals that were required in a Christian community. Using techniques to uh, sequence and analyse ancient DNA, they were able to reconstruct the um, ancient genome of Yersinia pestis. The surprising thing that emerges from this analysis is the fact that the genomes of medieval Yersinia pestis and those of existing strains are really remarkably similar. And yet the plague in the Middle Ages was so severe and the infections today are, are much less severe by comparison. What accounts for this difference does not really lie in the genome of the pathogen, but my, must lie somewhere else. And amongst the suggestions that the authors propose, are, for example, climatic changes, um, social changes uh, to do with the way we humans live, but also our own immunity. In the interim, between the Middle Ages and now, we would have been exposed to different pathogens, which perhaps has augmented our immunity and allows us to fight Yersinia pestis in infections better. In addition to uh, probing into the genetic basis of what made the bacterium so um, infectious at the time, allowed the authors to look at the evolution of the existing strains. Um, and one of the surprising things that they find is that all of the strains that are present in the world today originate from those strains that were around in medieval Europe in the middle of 14th century. Paradoxically, society was able to cope much better in the 14th century with deaths on this horrendous scale than we would be able to cope today. And this is primarily because people were, to a degree, self-sufficient and independent, whereas today we have such complex interconnections that deaths on anything like that scale would cause complete chaos. It's interesting to consider whether uh, Yersinia pestis will return um, in force in a similar way um, to what we experienced in, in the Middle Ages. It's really very difficult to say, um, considering that today we respond, humans respond to the infection much better than in that time, it's probably not very likely. But one thing to bear in mind, of course, is that there might be other infections that arise, new pathogens that arise, evolve, indeed bacteria that acquire pathogenicity um, in a similar way that Yersinia pestis um, acquired uh, from its predecessor, which um, was in fact a, a free-living, non-pathogenic, completely benign um, soil bacterium.